Hi, I'm Joshua Hamlin from A Look at Lego Podcast, and I'm here at Brick World 2012. This is my castle. I'm known for building my architectural landmarks from around the world. So we're actually using like a plexiglass material for the water. And this is the Lawrence of Arabia layout. Andy's room from Toy Story. I'm a Lego certified professional. There's about 24 to 2500 minifigs. People ask me that all the time and I just look at them blankly. I don't know. I'm Dale Klein. I'm from Hickory Hills, Illinois. And this is my castle. Um, I started it in 2007. Uh, took me about two years to build the castle. And then slowly just added more and more village on after that. Um, unfortunately, this Lego castle has had some catastrophes in the past, trying to transport it because it's so big. Uh, but I have learned uh, from past mistakes, and now it's stayed together for two full years. So I'm getting close to where I'm done with it, and it's exactly how I want it to be. More or less, a lot of greenery added on this last year, a lot of trees and plate and whatnot. And so out of this huge display here, what would you say is your favorite part? Probably my favorite part would be the tournament area with all the tents. I made a tent for every LEGO Castle faction that has ever been released by the LEGO company. And since I'm a collector of all the old classic Castle guys, uh, making a tent for each one was kind of fun and really expensive because uh, all the strange colored slopes are rare and some of them are very old. But uh, definitely a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. So how exactly do you transport something like this? Most people build modular and kind of take stuff up and put it down. Uh, me, I build on big pieces of plywood and slide them into a van. Uh, so this way, when I bring it, it comes pretty intact the way it is. There's so many minifigs and so much detail on here that more or less, if I was to try and set them up each time, it would take me weeks. So, so we've got to keep it pretty intact. Do you have any idea how many pieces this is all in here? 175,000, give or take 25,000 or so. I, I Really hard to get it narrowed down, to be honest with you. And how long did it take you to put together this whole thing? Four years, four and a half or so years now. Yep. We're uh, not quite done yet. I still have one more area I'd like to put out in the farmland area, and uh, I will continue to work on that until that's done. Then maybe on to the next project. <laughs> Hi, I'm Arthur Gujic, um, an adult fan of LEGO, and I'm known for building my architectural landmarks from around the world, as well as my mind-blowing mosaics. So I'm going to show you some of the mosaics. If you look at this one right over here, it looks like Anakin Skywalker, but as the camera goes by it and looks from the other direction, you'll see that it's going to change from Anakin Skywalker to Darth Vader. And you'll see that this mosaic most likely has changed right in front of your eyes to Darth Vader. It's called a lenticular mosaic, and it uses 4,096 different cheese slopes. The next one down is the Birth of Venus, followed by Jimi Hendrix, and a whole bunch of micro mosaics. It's a new technique that no one's ever used before that staggers the tiles and gets amazing resolution. If you keep on going around, you can see some of my landmarks from around the world. Usually I bring a larger variety, but this time I decided to bring all of my micro-scale landmarks. So I've done everything from Mont St. Michel, to the Taj Mahal, to the Tower of London, to Big Ben. And I'm going to let you guys continue without me. If you continued around, you'd see some more of my mosaics. You'd see some very famous paintings, Starry Night, the Mona Lisa and some Star Wars characters, Asako Tano, as well as one of my favorite, the Grateful Dead, Skull and Roses. Roger Snow, I'm uh, from Bartlett, uh, Illinois, and this is uh, a space off mine, or off-world mining operation. I uh, had an idea for a few years ago, and I uh, finally got a chance to uh, build it this year. And uh, it's taken almost a year to complete it. I just finished it basically early this week, so I was getting pretty close. You want to point out some of your favorite parts of the mock here? Uh, sure. Um, the, uh, the Crystal Bridge uh, was a rather challenging build, uh, just because there's very little structure. Normally a bridge would have uh, supports on both sides to keep it. Um, this one just has that center support, uh, and obviously it's all the clear technic beams. Then the, uh, basically the, the two helixes are probably the, the most challenging as far as just making sure things would ride smoothly uh, up and down. Um, 
and you can see that you know the trains are always always in motion. Hi, my name is Ben Ellerman, and I'm the uh, Pirates Coordinator at Brickworld. And we've been working on this pirate display for a number of years, but the new thing this year is that we're actually using like a plexiglass material for the water. The nice thing about that is you're allowed to put the all the animals under the water instead of on top of the water. So we have a series of 10 islands. Uh, they're all brick built and hollow with dark tan for the sand. Pretty much just organic shapes uh, getting away from base plates. And So we're trying to do something that's a little bit more realistic this year. Hi, I'm Brian Williams and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. And this is the Lawrence of Arabia layout. Here we feature trains that are focused around the whole movie experience of Lawrence of Arabia and uh, the experiences of T.E. Lawrence, the British intelligence officer who fought the Ottomans uh, and led the uh, Heshemites uh, against the Ottoman Empire in World War I. And here you can see two of the trains that are featured in the movie. We have the horse train and then we have another train which is for the actual Sultan of the uh, Ottoman Empire. It has interior detail and we have uh, all kinds of explosions and dynamite and bad guys and there's some British fighting over in the corner too. Hi, my, my name is uh, Matt Delanois. Uh, I go by Peppa Kin online uh, and uh, these are my creations for uh, Brickworld 2012. Um, first up we have the, the Ram. Uh, this is a building which is actually right across the street from here. Uh, it is a, a restaurant and brewery. Uh, been here years. Uh, I go there every year. I'm here at Brickworld. And last year, I finally decided, you know, I might want to build this someday. So I, I went around and took a whole bunch of pictures. Uh, earlier this year, I got, I got all the parts together. And it uh, took me about a, a month and a half to build uh, up until uh, last Tuesday. So, Do you have a favorite part of this build here? Well, um, I'm very glad that I got the roof to look the way it did. It's got this nice curvature, even, solid, and it's not snapping in half. I'm very proud of the lettering, the RAM title itself, the rooftop above the kitchen. When doing this, I looked on Google Maps to, fi to fi figure out just how big it was and get the deck dimensions, but it is kind of blurry. So all the equipment in the kitchen there, I really had no idea what it was. So instead, I just made a Death Star trench. So you, know, you, you, you get to have a lot of fun with these things. Uh, so, and, you know, and, and, and that's, that's really a joy of doing this. I can be very serious, uh, you know, be very exact, but then when it's all said and done, you add your finishing, add your finishing touches, you know, and, and and you enjoy it. The public enjoys it. This building right here is the Cantini Visitor Center. Our club, uh, the Northern Illinois Lego Train Club, does uh, shows here every year. Uh, and for our 10th anniversary show, I built the building that we display in. Lots of fun. I have a few mosaics from the Order of the Sick, uh, Team Fortress Mini Lands scale figures, uh, and a very popular one has always been the uh, Andy's Room from Toy Story done in the scale of the small little minifigures themselves. So it's uh, the room will be roughly 16 feet wide if you do it full scale, uh, but obviously uh, just, just 30 inches wide uh, in, in, in Lego. How many pieces? Yeah. Holy cow, I do not know. It's really hard to say. I, you know, someday I, maybe I really should count because people ask me that all the time and I just look at them blankly. I don't know. Uh, I'm Nick Caldwell, and I'm from Gurney, Illinois, and this is uh, my creation called uh, Metroscape, and it took uh, one year to make, and basically it's just all from up here. I just made it up as I went, and uh, yeah, mostly just basic bricks from um, just jugs and containers and stuff, and from brick leak and stuff. And So what's your favorite part of the build here? Probably just the center area with the uh, station, the um, bridge, and the military base. Do you have any idea how many bricks are in this here? At least 100,000, but I have no idea. It's like 12 years of collecting and stuff like that, so... Now, are you inspired by any, like, real-life buildings when you build some of your big city buildings, like skyscraper kind of buildings? Other than the Twin Towers, by the actual Twin Towers, not really. Just all stuff I made up as I went and stuff like that. Hi, I'm Beth Weiss with Brickology.com from Chicago. I'm a LEGO certified professional. Uh, one of 13 in the world and this is my display of math spiral and pattern projects some of these are interactive I do at parties with large groups of kids and these are displays I just bring out for brick world all with math concepts of education so my brother uh, has a lion knights and uh, he's got his lion knight castle down at this end we got the lion knights and the crown knights fighting each other and they're all heading down towards the snake castle and the snake city and uh, the snakes have the allies of the dragons 
We got the bulls, the uh, falcons, and the uh, wolf knights. And they kind of meet in the middle and there's a clash going on. Now I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but how many minifigs are there in this display? There's about 24 to 2,500 uh, minifigs and about 50 women. So what's your favorite minifig out of all the ones you have here? Uh, so I, I really like uh, I really like my captain of the bulls down there, and uh, he's chrome. He's got the chrome helmet. Uh, that's probably my favorite. I don't know which is yours. Probably the king. Well, I bought my brother a castle in 2004, one of the Lego sets, and then I thought I could outbuild him, so I built my castle, the custom one down there, and then he built a better castle, which was bigger, so then I built the Lego city, and then we started building armies to fight each other, and uh, it just kept growing. So, thousands of dollars later, we have these guys. So, And this is the first time we ever had them set up this big. We store them at our cabin, which is only like 22 feet by 22 feet. So this table is 18 feet long, so we've never had them all out together like this before. But basically my goal was to make it look like one of the Lego catalogs. You know, oh, in yeah, the 80s yeah. you open it up and it shows all the products in this really nice environment. So that's what I was, that was my goal, to make it look more like a, you know, a catalog page or something. So what's your favorite vintage set that you have here? Uh, here would probably be either the shuttle, which is a great classic set that's moving around. Um, I also like the Metro Park and Service Tower, which is the gas station and parking garage right there. The uh, launch and load seaport's a really good one here, too. Those, I'd have to say those are my top three. The airport was a really big one. That had never been done before, so when that came out, it was like, whoa, an airport, you know? So I jumped on that. The train, I mean... Now we're now I'm basically telling you all of them are my favorite. <laughs> How long did it take you to put together all this stuff here and you know, get it into display well, like you wanted? You know, not too long. I you know I I do cities a lot, so I kind of know where everything's gonna go just from doing it over and over and over again. But I have an area at work that I can I can bring the plates down and lay them out to you know kind of get a blueprint of what I'm gonna do. And then you know I brought it all here and decided you know okay weave the track through and figure out where all the buildings are going to go.